I'm Jeffrey Young, VOA News. Today my interview is with Jose Ungas. He is the chairman of Transparency International based in Berlin. Mr. Ungas, it's a pleasure to have you here and to have this discussion. Thank you very much. How are things in the ongoing fight against corruption? Where, are, where is the, the fight succeeding and where is it failing? In general, I would say that after 20 years of existence of Transparency International, the situation is not much better. And now I think we are confronting a new phenomenon that we call grand corruption, and we are trying to do an effort to define grand corruption because the encounter of uh, corruption and organized crime is, is, has empowered uh, these groups of people that are stealing money from uh, the societies. The former Ukrainian leader, Viktor Yanukovych, many reports have said that he and his cronies looted some $50 billion from the state coffers in Ukraine. This is grand corruption, correct? Absolutely. Uh, but not only it has to do with the economical impact of the damage uh, of, of these crimes, because if you steal some smaller amounts from communities uh, of poor people, it could be also grand corruption if these actions are affecting fundamental rights of people that are in a situation of vulnerability. And now that Russia has taken control of Crimea, there have been numerous reports that have said this is the oasis of illicit opportunity for crime and corruption, not just in Russia, but in transnational crime. Yes, but the, uh, the problem is that it's not only Crimea. There are several territories around the world that are in a similar situation. If you see what happened to Moldova or Paraguay in, in the southern region, uh, you will see that there have free territories where crime just is flourishing without any control. And these illicit groups of organized crime usually look for these territories. I think we are talking about 35 territories that were ranked from some organization that had no control and that are under uh, the absolute uh, uh, possibilities of these illicit groups. In situations where the rule of law is weak, is what I'm trying to get at, doesn't that provide the opportunity for corruption to flourish? Because don't they exist in an inverse relationship? Corruption is a very complex phenomenon. Mm -hmm. Uh, Robert Klitgar, an American professor who has studied corruption for many years, says that corruption is like AIDS. Uh, it affects everybody and doesn't discriminate gender, if you are poor or rich, if you are old or young. So we have corruption all around the world. Rule of law, of course, is a very important component uh, in order to undermine corrupt practices, but it's not the only one. But when rule of law and civil society are strong, then the effort to fight corruption is greatly assisted. When those two institutions are weak, I understand that it's much easier for corruption to flourish. You have countries with very high levels of rule of law, like the UK or the United States, but then you can find also huge scandals of corruption. Uh, and, and Spain is also one of these countries. In, in, in Europe, in Western Europe, you'll find many countries with strong rules of uh, rule of law, Japan, uh, in, in, in Asia, but then you, that doesn't necessarily determine that there's no corruption, no grand corruption even in so many cases. For years, the developers in the United States have looked at Havana and Cuba, and they have had dreams of a solid wall of condominiums and luxury apartments. This has been a development opportunity that has been denied for over 50 years, and now suddenly development is possible. I believe that if the Cuban government doesn't adopt uh, rigorous methods and, and practices in order to control this flow of money, of, of huge money that's going to come to the island, and the Americans don't do the same, then we will have a, probably a terrible situation here. Thank you for this extraordinary conversation. Thank you. My guest has been Jose Ugaz. He is the chairman of Transparency International based in Berlin. I'm Jeffrey Young, VOA News.